everyone. This is the Jeff Cowan coming to you from thejeffcowan.com with my podcast, Success in Professional Sales and Success in Life in General. Welcome back. Boy, I'm so excited to do this podcast. It just keeps growing and growing and growing, and the audience does. And I'm getting a lot of emails and telephone calls and texts from everybody out there, and I appreciate that. If you want to know how to get a hold of me, by the way, it's real simple. You either go to thejeffcowan.com, thejeffcowan.com, or go to automotive service training. Dot com. You can find me there. Uh, if you have something to say, tell me. And a lot of you have had something that you wanted to tell me. And uh, so today's message is going to be based around a couple of questions that I've gotten. One is, Jeff, if I really want to be the best I can be, what's one of the simplest, most effective ways that I could, uh, that, that I could get there? What is it I could do uh, to, to uh, help me accomplish that goal? And then another one that kind of goes with this is I've been getting a lot of uh, emails and texts from managers saying, you know, I've got some good salespeople, but they aren't fired up about training. They're not fired up about learning. They're not fired up about anything because they believe they're at the top of their game and nobody can teach them anything. And in and, and, and short, they believe they know everything there is to know about selling their product. And, and I, let me just make a comment on that last one, by the way, because the solution to both those questions is the same. But let me just make a comment on the last one. The day you start believing you know everything and the day you start believing nobody can teach you anything about what it is you do is the day that you immediately start to stagnate and go backwards. It's not a matter of if somebody's going to knock you off the throne. It's more of a question of when they're going to knock you off the th throne. But there's a very simple thing you can, you can do because, again, if you want to be the best you can be, and if you're already the best you can be, the question then is, is how much better can you be? Are you still leaving anything on, on, the, on the table? If you really want to be, though, the best you can be, it's fairly easy to do, and it's something that very few people are, will, are because they're not willing to do what it takes to be the best they can be. So let me say it again. It's something that everybody wants to be. It's something that very few people are because they're not willing to do what it takes to be the best they can be. Now, so what do I mean? Well, one thing that will definitely help you become the best you can be is develop the habit of reading. Now, you've heard me talk about this before, but I'm telling you, read anything you can get your hands on. If you take a look at the most successful people in the world, not just our nation, but in the world, I don't care what it is that they do, the most successful people read, 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 read. Now, I've, had, I've, I've put these stats out there before, but they're worth, worth mentioning again. This comes from the National Library Association of the United States of America. Check these numbers out. If you were to read just one book a month for 12 months, that would put you in the top 25% of all intellectuals on the planet. If you do just one book a month, let me repeat that again, one book a month for 12 months in a row, that would put you in the top 25% of all intellectuals in the world. Now check this out. If you read five books on any given subject, you now can consider yourself a world expert on that sub subject matter. And then here's the one that I really like, because you take that first one, one book a month, you're in the top 25. Well, check this out. If you read just for 15 minutes every day, for a year, based on the average length of a book and based on the average length or the average uh, speed that people read at, you'd be able to finish 20 books inside that year. Now, people that read really do stand out. For, let me give you a couple examples. Warren Buffett, everybody knows who Warren Buffett is. I mean, he's one of the wealthiest men in the world, a multi, multi billionaire many, many times over, right? He said in a recent article that he was on, they're doing a big biography about him, that he makes it a goal to read at least 500 pages of something every day. He, that when they ask him to bring down his success, if he could, to just one or two things, he said reading was at the top of the list. How can you learn anything? How can you know what's happening if you don't read, read, read? Uh, now, I don't want to get political here with you, but I just read something about the second George Bush, uh, the president, uh, the younger. Uh, he, he used to have a reading contest in the White House, uh, and, and uh, check this out. He reads, on average, 110 books in a year. His worst year in the last 20 years is he only got to uh, uh, finish 95 books. So you can see that people are really out in front of the, the game. People that really accomplish it, move to the top and get there and stay there. They read, read, read. Now, there's, there's something that's really interesting about this, too. It kind of proves it out. You know, there's another stat out there that says 80% of all salespeople in all professions of sales put together, 80% of all salespeople have never read a sales book from cover to cover. I mean, that's an astounding percentage to me. 80% of all salespeople out there today have never read a sales book cover to cover, yet that's what they, that's, that's the, the, the one thing, their job, they get them everything they want, pays their house, feeds their kids and all that stuff. 80% of them have never read a book on what it is they do. Now check this out, because here's the second part of this step. 
20% of all the salespeople in professional sales make over 80% of the money. So think about that. 80% have never read a sales book from cover to cover, meaning that 20%, at least 20% have done that, and they're the ones that make the money. So reading has something to it, I can tell you that. But when it comes to reading, there's a big problem. And the problem is really twofold. Number one, the first thing is, is believing that you could learn something, believing that you don't know everything. That's the, that's the first problem because you can get into this scenario where you just think you know it all because you're successful. Maybe you're leading the sales board week after week, month after month, maybe even year after year. So you start to believe that you know everything and nobody can teach you things, anything. That's the first problem. And the second problem is simply whether or not you have the time, and I'll prove to you that you do. Well, let me tell you something. I'll share something personal with you. I've suffered from both of those. There was a time early on in my sales career where I was, was, was selling products and I was just always number one. It was the furniture industry, as a matter of fact. I mean, I was number one. Uh, the, the second year I was in the business, I was working at a place that had over 80 salespeople and 10 months in a row in that second year, I was salesperson of the month. Now, let me tell you something. If you think, if you've met me here recently, you think I've got an ego now, you should have seen me back then because you could tell me nothing. You could tell me nothing. All right, I thought I knew it all. But an interesting thing happened to me because everybody kept, they give me books and say, read this because you'll never, and I don't want to read that. I don't have time for that. I read this article. I don't have time for that, you know, because I just knew everything. But a really odd thing happened, and I don't mean to be crude here, but I was working at the furniture store one day, and I, and I, um, how can I say this? I went to sit on my throne, all right, if you know what I mean. And there was a magazine uh, within arm's reach. And so I just picked up the magazine and I started reading it. And I read an article on the value of writing handwritten thank you notes. Now, at the time, in the company I was working with, nobody did that. But I read that there were four or five people quoted in there that by, when they sent out handwritten thank you notes, that they saw a 20% return on their time and their investment. Now, not necessarily dollar for dollar, but they felt that with, with, with real statistics, it was that 20% of people responded to those in kind and came back and bought products for them. And we're talking about people that they talked to that didn't buy, they sent them a handwritten thank you note, and 20% of those people would come back. Well, actually, I found out that was a low number. And I thought, wow, you know, I'm, I, if I'm doing what I'm doing, but if I could make 20% more money, because that's the way I related that, do I simply send out a, a handwritten thank you note? I mean, back, back at that time, I was only talking to three or four people, maybe five people in a 10-hour in a, in a period. That would be pretty simple to do. And so I started to do it. And I realized very quickly that not only did it work, and I got a much higher return than the 20%, by the way, not only did it work, but what I also learned was two more things. I didn't know everything, okay? And number two, I did have time to read. So... What's the steps for you to become a great reader? All right. What's the steps for you to become a great reader? Well, I'm going to tell you about that in a second. But before I do, i got to tell you about this book sitting over here. Just got the hard copies in. The, 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 the online version has been available for a while. It's called Write Service and Write Your Own Paycheck. Now, if you're in sales and you're doing a job that you like and you like the product you represent, the service you represent, stay there. Just keep listening to me. I'll give you tips to make you the best that you can be. If you're thinking about changing a career, you're looking for something different, this book might have the answer for you. If you're listening to this podcast and you've never been in sales, but you're considering a career in sales, this book might be the book for you because I'm going to show you how to make six figures with this book. You say, where do I get the book? You go to thejeffcowan.com and get it there or automotiveservicetraining.com and get it there or you go to amazon.com and get it there. Now, if you go to one of the websites, you'll also see that I've taken the time and painstakingly recorded a 10, over 10 hours of video to support this book to show you exactly how to do what I talk about in the book. So, both of those are available at, at thejeffcowan.com or automotiveservicetraining.com. Go there, check this out. I'm very proud of this. It's doing very, very well. We're selling it. As a matter of fact, I just sent out an order to get more of the hard copies copied. It's a great book. Pick it up. I think you'll, you'll, uh, you'll like it. But back to what we're talking about. So we're talking about when we started this, we had two concerns here. One, I was getting a lot of texts and emails from people saying, Hey, how can I be the best I can be? What's a simple way to me to improve myself? And the second one was, is I've got people on my sales staff as a manager, and they think they know everything, and I can't get them to, to, to get involved in training or read or, anything, or do anything, so what can you do? So we decided that reading is one of the quickest and easiest ways to do that. So I'm going to give you uh, some real quick steps here 
on, on what it takes to become a great reader. Now, in saying this, you know, one of the pushbacks I always get from this is, well, Jeff, if you've read one sales book, haven't you read them all? If you've read one leadership book, haven't you read them all? You read one motivational book, haven't you read them all? And the answer to that is, at the end of the day, no, not really, but I see where you're coming from because at the end of the day, how many different ways can you look at somebody and say, do you want to buy it? So I kind of get the thought process there. And I got to tell you, over time, I got a little tired of reading uh, some of the sales books that, that were out there, and I've got well over 1,500 of them in my personal library uh, and, and whatnot. So know that you can, you can read all kinds of books. One of my favorite types of books to read is presidential history. If you want to learn how to make decisions, learn how to sell, learn how to motivate people. I mean, to be a president of the United States, pick any one. That, they're all of that. I read military books. I find, you know, if you want to learn how to make decisions, you want to learn how to sell. Uh, again, good stuff in that. So you can read all types of stuff. As a matter of fact, one of my favorite books of all time is D-Day 1944, written by Stephen Ambrose. Just a brilliant, brilliant book. I think everybody should read it. Another great book you can read you'd really like is the one written by Isaacson, Walter Isaacson, about Steve Jobs. Great leadership, motivation, selling book, marketing book, everything all rolled into one. Jobs is a difficult personality, so I'm not supporting how he treated people, but great book. And then one of my favorite all-time selling books of all time, you've heard me say it before, there's two of them, The 100 Secrets to Closing the Sale by Zig Ziglar and then How to Master the Art of Selling Anything by Tom Hopkins. All great books to read. So how do you get in the habit of reading? All right, well, first thing that you have to do is understand that you do have time. You see, don't get in your head that you have to sit down for hours and hours and hours and read. Don't get in your head that you have to sit down for an hour and read. Don't get in your head you have to sit down and, and for a half hour and read, 15 minutes read, 10 minutes read, one minute read. If you only have one minute to read, read for that one minute. But while you're reading it, whether it's for one minute, five minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, half hour a day, when you're reading it, read it. Block everything else out and get into what you're reading. Focus on what you're reading, okay? Focus on what you're, you're reading, okay? And, and, and so uh, uh, do just that and set yourself up for, for, for the time to do that. So, so when, do you, when do you do that? Well, let's just take a look at it. I don't want to be crass here, but we, we go to the restroom. Why read People Magazine? Why not read a selling book? Uh, before you go to bed at night, excellent way to, to, to relax your mind and think about, because here's one thing I wish I had time to talk about today and I don't. Your mind will actively work on the last thing it was thinking about as you fell asleep. So what better thing to start working on selling processes and selling techniques that are going to make you better. So end of the day, you can sit there and read for 10, 15 minutes. Uh, at lunchtime, uh, you can do that. You can, you can get books on tape, which are kind of the same, but not really, really the same, or do what I do. I get up every morning and feed my dogs about 4.30 in the morning. I then walk out at 5 o'clock, sit on my back patio, turn the heaters on, and I sit and read for anywhere from 10 to 30 minutes. I don't always have 30 minutes, but it always seems like at least I have 10, and when I'm doing that, I'm focused on just that. So the first step here is, is in, in becoming a reader is you have to want to be the best you can be, which is one of the questions we're answering, or you, and or you have to understand that you'll never know anything. You're never going to know everything there is to know about what you do. You can always learn more. So number one, choose to read it. Choose to read what it is that you're going to read, whether it's a sales book, motivation, leadership, management, or something else, choose to read it. And then step two, very quickly here, choose to believe it. Believe that what you're reading will work. Believe that what you're reading could make you better. Believe that what you're reading could have an answer to a long, long lost question that you've had in the past. You know, so many times I, I will find people that read, but they'll say, oh, you know, it was a good book, but that would never work for me. Or, well, that was a good thought, but that would never work here. Or, you know what, my customers are different. My product's different. My service is different. I'm different. Something's different. And so they read this stuff with the mindset that they're different. Well, guess what? You're not. Okay, so y y instead of looking at it and saying this would never work for me, look at it and say, why not try it? I mean, think about all those years ago when I was in the, when I was in the cradle of, uh, of being a salesperson. After reading that magazine on the thank you notes, if I would have said, oh, that would never work for my customers. This is just simple retail selling furniture. Never. I mean, I would have left 20% instantly, 20% of my income on the table. And it turned out to even be more than that. And over the years, those handwritten thank you notes, the return on investment, if I would have said, wouldn't work you, but I tried it and it worked. And there's been other things that are much more out there and a little bit further, you know, kind of kind of goofy stuff but I've always given it a chance. Hey, why not? This person tried it. It, it, it you know, must have worked well enough for, sit down write, for them to sit down and write a book about it, so why wouldn't I choose to believe it would work? So I'll try it. I go into a why not here. Number three, act on it. Once you read it, once you believe it, act on it. Now go do it, whatever it is. And the number four, choose to be successful.
you know, because I just got to tell you again, you know, choose to read it, choose to believe it. Why wouldn't it work here? Act on it and then choose to be successful because what you're going to find with reading is, is that it, is, is that it delivers growth. It's a compass to guide you to where you want to go, your ultimate goals. It quenches a thirst and it feeds your, it feeds your, your skill and, and your ability to be the best you can be. You know, so many times people get into sales because they like what professional sales has to offer. They like the freedoms and the benefits that it offers. And it does offer a lot of freedoms. It's one of my favorite things about being a salesperson is all the freedom I have to do what I want to do, come and go, and the like. And many of you are in the same situation. But just because it gives you freedoms in sales, when you're in the sales profession, it doesn't give you freedom from studying. It doesn't give you freedom from uh, trying to be the best you can be. And it doesn't give you freedom from reading and again, trying new things. Choose to read it, choose to believe it, act on it, choose to be successful. I hope you enjoyed this message today because I sure, help, I sure uh, enjoyed uh, giving it to you. My name is Jeff Cowan. I'm coming to you from thejeffcowan.com out here in sunny Southern California. I want you to come back next week because I'm going to have another message I know you're going to love because if you love this one, you're going to love that one. In the meantime, do what I'm going to do. Go make it a great week. Sell a whole bunch of stuff and live the life that you so deserve to live because you're living in the great United States of America and you can get it done. I know you can, but keep coming back and listen. I'll see you next Tuesday. Take care, everybody.